This is the first lecture um, in international wildlife um, human arbor population dynamics. Um, we're going to be reviewing this PowerPoint. Before we even start off, I want to um, actually it's on the second. The link to it is on the second page if you want to go to that. But I want to show you a short clip that's about seven minutes on YouTube. Um, I watched this when I was in college, so it's been around for a while. Uh, and it's um, extremely uh, illuminating uh, about human overpopulation. So sit back. Um, I'm going to turn this on. Environment is a system of living things. The Earth is our environment. The capacity of our environment to provide space, to produce food, and to supply energy are all limited. Humans thrive on less than 17% of the Earth's surface. Only about 4% will grow crops. We depend on these limited resources for our survival, and yet we're increasing our population as if they were infinite. This fact is at the core of our environmental problems. On this map, we'll show population growth from the year 1 AD to present and then project our growth into the year 2030. Population concentrations will be indicated by dots, each of which will represent one million people. In areas where people are spread out and don't live in concentrations of one million, dots are placed in the middle of their approximate range. As some areas become superpopulated, dots will spread outward in order to show the total population within the map. Historical references will be provided by images and text on the lower right. Okay, if you didn't get that, each one of those dots is a million people. I want you to watch this. Notice North America. Notice Africa, where we're going. Notice India and China, even 2,500, 2,000 years ago, was quite populated. Um, Europe begins to grow. Um, and, and you're going to see some declines as well as we go through this. Um, but what's really illuminating is going to happen in the last 100 years. So just sit back and watch.
decline when the Mongols go into China. Very dramatic. Those are millions of people. So watch Europe. If present growth rates continue, our population will double in about 50 years. Yet the Earth's size remains the same. Slowing human population growth and lowering our consumption of natural resources is key to reducing the impact we have on our planet. Through our personal decisions about our numbers and our lifestyles, each of us can help to preserve the health and beauty of our home. Okay, some of you know me, uh, some of you don't. I'm not really into scare tactics. Um, I am not a chicken little. Uh, but I believe this um, lecture, this is not scare tactics, this is just truth. Uh, and what we're going to be discussing is, is scary. I hope it scares you. Um, it scares me. Unfortunately, I think about it every day. I wish I didn't. Um, Let's just go over our own population um, and look at it. Um, in, when populations grow, whether they be bacteria or humans, uh, the biotic potential uh, exceeds the resistance, meaning births in, uh, are way higher than deaths. Um, it, currently, there are about 7.1 billion people on Earth. Each one stood up, pronounced their name, and sat down. It would take 600 years to complete the roll call. By 2025, it'll take 1,000 years. And every second I'm talking, there are 2.33 babies born. Um, so our population is growing very fast. And this is what our population curve looks like. If you go back, there's the Black Plague death. Um, and here we get to 1830. Uh, and you can see it begins to rise. What we're really looking at, and you're going to have to compute uh, on your this uh, assignment for this project, um, is doubling time. And doubling time, it's just math. Um, but let me put it in, in a way that you might understand it a little bit better. If I start off with a 40-acre pond, and I have one lily pad, if it takes a day for a lily pad to double, so you go from one to two, it will take you 244 days before that 40 acre pond is 50% covered. Okay, so 50% of the cover of the pond is covered uh, in 244 days. It will take one more day to cover the 40 acre pond. And that is what we're looking at here. When you start going from 6 to 12 billion, 6 to 10 billion, 2 to 4 billion, you get into incredible 1960 to 1987, a 2 billion double people added to the earth in 27 years. It's because there's so many of us now that our population doubling time, if it's only 100 people doubling, no problem with resources, but when you've got two people, two billion people doubling, it's incredibly scary, uh, and that's really what the, we're we're living with. Um, 
reasons for our increased growth are causes of diseases are recognized. We've improved nutrition, uh, discovery of antibiotics, improvements in medicine, uh, increase in the number of women who actually reach childbearing age, uh, and then that short doubling time, as I've already mentioned. Our survivorship, uh, human survivorship curves used to look like this uh, pre-1700. Now they look very much like this. People live for a much longer period of time. They give birth to more children. Um, and this is some, some scary. This is 2005. Um, they had hoped that the population would stop about here. Uh, this is where they would like it to stop. Uh, this is where we're scared it was going to stop, and this is what it would be if it were constant with today's growth rate in the world population, which it's just most of us, uh, many of us, and, and I think the experts don't think the world can hold that many people, over 12 billion people. Now, everything we're going to talk about for the rest of the summer, um, the environmental consequences, uh, is going to be primarily from human overpopulation, air pollution, fuel consumption, global warming, loss of biodiversity, water pollution, desertification, nutrient overload, nuclear waste, uh, soil erosion, air pollution, uh, loss of animal habitat is all primarily caused because there's just too many people in the world. It, it's not some sort of new technology, there's just too many people uh, in the world. Um, and our effects on the world are due to our population size, oftentimes the affluence, uh, especially our continent uh, and Europe, and then technology. And technology can certainly have a negative effect, but it can also have a positive effect. I'm the first to admit that. If you look at high income, highly developed industrialized countries like ourselves, Japan, Canada, and this is data from 2005. The average growth national income per capita is 26,710. So there, there are children involved in that. You know, a baby isn't making 26K. But um, that is the gross national income. If you look at middle income, moderately developed countries, Latin America, South Africa, China, the GNI is, is $1,850. So that's quite a... Uh, you didn't realize how wealthy you were. Uh, Low-income developing countries, uh, where we're going, gross national income often is $430. That's an incredible, I mean, there are a lot of people, up to 2 billion people live on $2 a day. Um, I can't even get out of my driveway for less than $2. So uh, if you look at the ecological footprint, which is a measure of how many acres each one of us requires for us to continue to live um, in our, our lifestyle. You can see that North America requires about nine, nine and a half hectares per person, um, whereas 3,313,000,000 people uh, are living on about one hectare. Uh, and these are the middle income countries, the low income countries, um, even less than that. So. You can see the discrepancy in resource use. Uh, in, in the United States, we use uh, the largest share of 11 of 20 commodities. We eat more than three times the global average in meat. We lead the world in paper consumption. And our environment keeps improving uh, because we're spending money to uh, increase our, uh, the, the environment around us, uh, which enables us to clean up our immediate environment Sometimes, by transferring waste to more distant locations, all our electronic waste um, goes to other countries. We don't uh, really get rid of it in our country. Um, and most importantly, the thing I'm, I'm going to try and make you aware of is, is we isolate ourselves and we're unaware of the stresses caused by our consumptive lifestyle in areas of the world where we don't live. If you look at demographics of life, this was 2001. This data isn't easily uh, obtained right away, but um, in 2001, there were 285 million people in the United States, 6.1. Um, I know it's 7.1 now. Uh, a few less people per square mile. Um, 
fewer births per thousand people than the rest of the world, same amount of deaths. Fertility rate is a little lower. Uh, percent of population under age 15 is a little lower, which is a good thing, which shows that our population isn't growing incredibly fast. We have many more people over the age of 65, which I hope to get to. Um, births per thousand women, um, age 15 to 19, are equal though, which is surprising. The infant deaths is much, much less. Our gross national income per capita is much greater. Uh, the number of calories uh, we eat from animal products is about double what the rest of the world does. Uh, and here's a really uh, strong one. We feed 66% of the grades we grow in our country to livestock as far, instead of consuming it. 97% of the grain grown in other countries is consumed directly by people, which is a little more efficient use of the land instead of feeding it to animals. Um, Carbon emissions is about five times greater than the United States. Um, we use very little energy from renewable resources, uh, and we have a very little small uh, labor force in agriculture because tractors do most of our work. Um, a child born today in the U.S. Uh, by 75 years old will produce 52 tons of garbage, consume 10 million gallons of water, and use five times the energy of a child born in the developing world. Um, if we could increase the fuel mileage of cars by just three mil miles per gallon on average, we could save the same amount of oil that could be tapped from the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge over a 10-year period. Um, we mentioned two point, I mentioned 2.3 babies born per second every 20 minutes. Uh, another 3,500 humans are born around the world, but every 20 minutes we are losing one species. We're losing about one species to extinction. Uh, that's not endangered. That's going extinct uh, by about 27,000 species per year. Um, population is growing faster than food in 65 of 105 developing countries. Over cultivation due to population has degraded some 2 billion hectares of land, which is the area of Canada and the United States combined. So. Um, because crops are being grown at such a great rate uh, and care is not being cared, the soil is not being taken care of, wind erosion, soil erosion, water erosion, um, we've ruined that much arable land. Here's the really scary one uh, that many people are predicting is, is going to be coming to the forefront in the next 10 to 20 years. The demand for fresh water exceeds the supply by 17% already. Two-thirds of the world's population will experience some form of severe water shortage in the next 25 years. By 2025, uh, when the population could reach 8 billion, 48 countries with a total population of 3 billion will face chronic water shortages. Uh, humankind, we could be using 90% of all available fresh water, just leaving 10% for the rest of the world's plants uh, and animals. If you look at the disparity going back to developed nations like our own, um, there's 16% of the world's population, but we control 81% of the world's wealth. Uh, low income developing countries, 41% of the world's population, only 3.4%, uh, which is a difference in per capita income of 62 to 1. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I still can't get over that 2 billion people, which is almost 10 times the number that live in the United States live on um, one to two dollars a day. 790 million people uh, right now are, are malnourished. Uh, degradation is rampant. Fertility rates are highest in the poorest countries, which we're going to get into here pretty quick. One-fifth of the world's population live on less than a dollar a day. 1.1 1 .1 and a half billion don't have any access to clean water and 2.4 lack assets to sanitary facilities. So most people don't have anything close to a bathroom like you do. Let's look at doubling times. I uh, already mentioned that the world is fertility rate is about 2.8. Um, so right now we're at 7.1 billion. I'm going to show you how to compute a doubling time because you're going to have to do that for several countries. Um, but essentially, you um, divide 70 by the fertility or the population growth rate, and you'll come up with the, the doubling time. 
development countries uh, essentially are growing much, much slower, if any at all. Uh, developing countries are growing much, much faster. We're going to go keep this link um, in mind. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to show you how to use it for your assignment. Um, this is the estimates of most populous countries in 2025, which is, what, 10 years from now. India, uh, China is the most populous country now. India will surpass them um, in another 10 years. Um, Pakistan, uh, you can see the growth. This is the ratio of 2025 to 1950. So you, this gives you an idea of the r most rapidly growing countries. Pakistan, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Iran, uh, most of the Middle Eastern countries would fit in there. Mexico is up there quite fast. Um, but just the, it just shows you um, the countries two to two, we're not growing. Um, there's no really other developed countries in this. Brazil would be slower. Um, if you look at the highest and lowest fertility rates, the highest is the area where the gross national income is $225 per year. This was 2001 data, I believe. The life expectancy is only 47 years. Um, infant mortality is very, very high. Growth rate is 2.9. Lowest is in Western and Eastern Europe. Matter of fact, Eastern Europe is declining. Russia is one of those. Gross national income, $3,100, 19,000 in Western Europe. Um, so you can see that there's a definite correlation between income and slow or reduced population growth. Look at percentage of people under age 15. That's a very good, um, when we look at population pyramids here in a bit, you'll see that the number of, or percentage of people in lower age groups, 0 to 15, 0 to 5, etc., give you an idea of whether that country is really growing uh, or that it's stable or even declining. Uh, you can see Europe is the lowest number of people under 15, and these are the people that are going to have children later. We're assuming that they're not having children now, so 20% of North America is going to have children later. Um, the Oceanic Islands, Asia, and Africa is the fastest growing uh, in some of the countries. If you look at fertility rates, again, here's your, your growth rate. Um, it's called different things in different places. I'll try and uh, clear that up. Um, you got to exclude China because they now have a one-child law. Um, average in age in Asia would be 37 years. They will double Egypt 33, Kenya 35, Madagascar only 23 years, India the largest country in the world 41 years. They could go to 2 billion. Iraq only 28 years, Vietnam 54, Haiti, Brazil. Mexico only 29 years. Developed nations, we actually could double in 120 years. Um, Canada 233. Germany and Italy are declining. Spain is essentially staying the same. If you look at growing cities, um, the, the interesting trend here is you can see that the, the cities that are continuing to grow are the undeveloped nations. In more developed nations, China, LA, um, New York, um, Tokyo, the, the cities aren't growing uh, near as fast after the year 2000 especially. That's because the immigration from the rural areas has already occurred. Uh, it's still occurring in the more developed nations. The people are over cultivating the land. They have nowhere else to go. They, they've run out of land. They've run out of water. They have to go to the city. Um, uh, and it creates even more and more problems. Um, the, the United Nations, which I don't know what your opinion is of the United Nations. I'm not going to really discuss politics in this class, but they have, it's the only group that really can address this, and they have developed what's called a human poverty index um, for different countries uh, that has to do with the probability of birth of not surviving to age 40, the adult illiteracy rate, percentage of populations with unimproved water, percentage of children under five or underweight. Um, and this 
also correlates with the number of people on their poverty, percentage of people living on less than $1 per day. Um, you can see 70% of the site Nigeria, 73% Mali, 59% uh, in Gambia, uh, India 44%, and that gives you some idea of the human poverty index. Um, this is a uh, population increase. You can see since 1950 in Europe and North America, there's been very little change. Matter of fact, it is it's expected to continue to decline, especially in Europe. Uh, however, in the developing countries, uh, these areas. So the people that are having the most children um, are the people that are the poorest. And we'll look at that uh, why here in just a couple minutes. Basic human needs, drinkable water, edible food, safe housing, health care, education, and a job. And when these kinds of things don't happen, this is a, a pretty complex uh, figure. I don't want to read all of it for you. Um, but as populations begin to explode, sub farms are subdivided into smaller plots. They're no longer able to support the families. People have to move to the city. Uh, there's more marine fishing. There's more poaching of wildlife. Uh, more land is brought into agriculture, leading to higher soil erosion, depletion of fertility. Wetlands are drained. We lose fisheries. We lose wildlife by, uh, habitat. We have greater extinction. Um, they, people move to cities. There's more squalor. There's more disease. There's more antibiotic dis resistance of disease that are 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 are, are, are showing up. Um, it's just a it's a, just a cruel cruel cycle that's going on in the world outside of really what you see uh, because it's not going on in our country. So to create a sustainable population, um, then we need to lower the fertility rates. Uh, our consumption of resources must decrease and we must work to protect the environment. This is the population profile. I mentioned this earlier. So you're looking at the percentage of people here between 0 and 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24. And this is 1990. You can see there's us baby boomers, which I'm in. Um, 1990, I was somewhere in here. Uh, so the majority, that, that was the last big birth pulse we had post-World War II. Um, and you can see we have more and more people. Now in 2000, you can see that by then the majority of these people had had children. Um, so you can see a large proportion of people uh, at 5 to 9, 10 to 14. But the actual number of babies being born are less. Um, and then it becomes more and more square. Uh, instead of pyramid-like. Uh, and when you get a square population, you have a population that is uh, no longer growing. Um, this is uh, some projected population growth curves in Europe, especially Eastern Europe, where the number of children is much less than the number of uh, more elderly people. Um, and you can see it just continues on into 2025. Versus here are developing nations where you always have this large population between 0 to 14. Now remember each one, if, if the average person in this country is going to have three to four children, all these people are coming behind, behind them to have three and four children. So even if no one else is born uh, starting in year 2025, you're still going to have a huge population increase because all these people are going to have, uh, um, if you are going to continue to have children. So, eh, be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth is not a very good idea. Um, here you can see more stable countries, uh, developing countries are going to continue to to grow like this. I'm going to skip over this uh, because it's. it's it's harder to explain, especially when I'm not in a classroom with you. It's called the demographic transition, which means if, if, if the growth rate would actually slightly decline, you went from 3.8 to 1.8. Um, the population would continue to grow because of all those people between 0 to 14. Even though they're going to have 1.8 children, 
they're going to that population will begin to to grow, and and that's what this shows. So if the fertility rate, for example, in Iraq uh, was reduced to less than two, uh, the population would still continue to increase at a really rapid rate for 50 to 60 years because of the number of young children that are yet to have kids. All right, this is important for you to remember. Uh, this is the crude birth rate minus the crude birth rate divided by 10 gives you the rate of increase. I'm going to show you where to find this so you won't have to compute it for all these countries. And then you divide the rate of increase, 70 by the rate of increase, and that will give you the doubling time. Let's look at a couple uh, countries, the developing nations. Uh, India, that's already at 2004, is 1.7 billion. Um, most women are having about three kids. Um, many more being born than dying. Population growth rate is 1.44%. Uh, so it will double in 48, 50 years. So where's a tiger going to live in 50 years? If, if 2 billion, if this goes from 1.04 to 2 billion, uh, there's not going to be a place for a tiger. And you're going to be, you guys are going to live for 50 more years. I'm not. This is Sudan. Um, five children per woman. Uh, quite a few numbers of death. The death rate is down 2.64, and they are going to double in about 26.5 years. So um, northern Africa continue to increase. Um, some other countries, Kenya, rate of increase is 2, um, 35 percent. Mexico, 2.2, 32 years. USA, we could double in 116 years. We've already talked about in Denmark, 431 years. Uh, again, the demographic transition that is just showing Western Africa, Western and Southern Asia, Latin America, North America, and then Europe is already showing uh, a decline. By the year 2020, 65 out of 117 countries will not be able to feed their own people. One billion people will be living in cities that cannot support its inhabitants. 400 million more women will be in need of child spacing services. 600 million new jobs will be needed. We'll need twice as much fresh water. And 300 million additional children will need teachers, books, and classrooms. Again, this is just a graph showing something we've already discussed. Fertility rate really declines as income goes up. So why then, people who have no money, why are they having such large families? Obvious question. First is old age security. In the other countries, developing nations, they don't have social security. They don't have a pension system. They don't have a retirement. They know they're going to get sick. They know their bodies are going to wear down. They need help taking care of themselves in old age. So having many children makes it easier for them to be taken care of. Also, um, if you're going to, if you think you need five children to help you with the farm, um, you can estimate that at least in the past, a couple, three children are going to die, so they have more uh, than they really needed uh, because they're anticipating some of the kids dying during their childhood. Uh, children are definitely needed as an economic asset. Uh, they're needed with rural areas, they're needed in cities um, to assist the parents in feeding everyone. There's very little importance attached to education, uh, especially in rural areas uh, and especially with women. And the status of women in most of these areas is extremely, extremely low. Um, women really don't have a say. In India, for example, most of India, the mother-in-law decides how many children that family will have, not the woman itself. Uh, so there's there's a very little, uh, very little the women have to say about their own body and how many children they will have. Contraceptives are not available in developing nations, although that's becoming more and more um, being dealt with more and more. There's two thoughts um, that come out of, of world politics. I call it the Republican and Democrat, but, but it's just world conservative versus Demo uh, liberal. I don't know what you want to call it. One is that we need to concentrate, excuse me, 
on population policies and family planning technologies to bring down birth rates. And the second is if we concentrate on development, population growth will slow down automatically as it did in developed nations. So one group is trying to give money to, to help with family planning. The other is saying, let's help the economy and the people will, and, and both I think are correct, um, but how you do it is difficult. So when you start to look at this, and it, I hope you're scared by now, and I know I am, uh, let's look at some areas where that have been successful in, in slowing down. And one is an area, I mean, India has states, just like we do here in the U.S., not as many, but one of the states is Kerala. Uh, and let's look at Kerala compared to the rest of India. The life expectancy in Kerala is 71 years versus 61 for the rest of Infant mortality, only 17 children out of 1,000 versus 72. And fertility rate is under 2 versus 3.3 for the rest of the country. This is the most important. There is a 95% literacy rate. All villages in the state have access to school. And most importantly, most importantly, women are as well educated as men. It's becoming more and more evident more and more evident through um, research that's being done is women are educated. If women have a choice, they will have less children. There's just way too much data to back that up. So it, it's, it, I mean, if really, if you want to help a, a developing country reduce their population growth, the best way to do it is educate the young girls. Allow them to have some choices in their lives and they will make decisions and, and they will choose to have less children. Contraceptions, uh, I'm from the abstention method, uh, it doesn't work. Mechanical condoms and diaphragms, chemical, surgical, interuterine devices are used in many countries, some they are not. Um, this is kind of a duh, but it's, it's, it just shows you that where contraceptives are not available, there's an incredible growth rate. Where contraceptives are very available, there is a very low growth rate. Most people will choose to have less children. You look at contraceptives in different regions. Uh, you can see in Africa, almost half the people are using, uh, no, excuse me, uh, in most of Africa, um, 90, I think it's almost 90%, they are not using any sort of fertilization, of contraception. Uh, in Latin America, in the half, uh, about 50%, uh, and then Eastern Asia, less than 50, um, well, very much fewer, uh, or at least most people are using some sort of contraception. Um, decline in fertility rates, I mean, the word is getting out, but 6.3 to 5.2 is not what we need. We need it under two. Latin America and in the Caribbean, Asia, China, uh, they've done that with a one-child law and then developed countries. Here's, you know, again, uh, in areas where people, especially women, are uneducated, here's where you have the highest number of children. So Africa, here in the areas where the women are, educa are educated, they're much a lower population growth rate. So there's just very little argument over their whether or not um, educating women works. Uh, the Millennium Development Goals um, back in towards 2000 were to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, achieve universal primary education, promote gender equality and empower women, reduce child mortality, improve maternal health, combine HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases, ensure environmental sustainability, and forge a global partnership for develop. This is the um, uh, 1994 Cairo conference. Um, all nations agree that population is an issue uh, and must be confronted. Um, and they, uh, let's see. They agreed to maintain and enhance the productivity of natural resources, uh, empower women 
and emphasis on family, uh, enhance reproductive and basic health, improve education, reduce population migrations. Um, and then there was an agreement from the developed all the world to give 0.7% of the gross national product um, to fight this. Now, this is embarrassing to me, should be to you as well. Um, this is actual, 0.7% is what we agreed to. Here's the United States in blue. You can see that we're not even getting 0.05 uh, towards uh, working towards overpopulation, nor is any other group. I mean, this should be at 0.7. Um, nobody's doing it. The only countries that are meeting that need are the developing nations. So the rich countries are kind of isolating themselves. And in fact, in our country, Ted Turner and Bill Gates have given more money um, to try and stop the fl uh, flow of overpopulation than the United States government has, which again really embarrasses me. Um, the new direction that's seen is, is to improve education for girls and women, um, improving health and lowering infant mortality, making family planning accessible, enhancing income through employment opportunities, and improving resource management. Um, the greatest challenge is HIV or AIDS. Um, this is the effect of population structure in Botswana. These are the people that are dying. The blue, uh, the red, is the people who are actually able to survive. The average age now in Botswana is, I think, 38 years old is, is death, uh, whereas it used to be in the 60s. 90% um, of all HIV-infected people live in developing countries. Um, life expectancy in Botswana was 61 years. It's now 39 years. One million elementary students lost their teachers. 25 million AIDS orphans in the developing world by 2010. Um, and it's, we're trying to deal with it, uh, the country, the world is trying to deal with it through counseling. But if the people aren't educated, uh, they're going to believe village elders versus what you to know to be facts based on science. Uh, and it's very, very difficult to just come in uh, from another area of the world and think that they're going to immediately listen to you. Um, this is a program that's been very successful. Uh, instead of large-scale money, they're giving microloans, uh, primarily to women, uh, in the because the women take care of the budget. Uh, it doesn't upset the existing social structure. Uh, utilizes local resources. Essentially, they're lending a small amount of money to families to improve things on their farm, uh, to buy land, to um, provide for ir irrigation, uh, etc. Thailand was an area that was very successful in reducing uh, the, the number of children born per family. Uh, they went from an annual population growth from 3.3 in 72 to 1.2 in 1995. Um, and they focused on the wants and needs of the poor. Um, and they used, they did this by using celebrities uh, to market uh, and, and they used tumor to break taboos of, of contraceptions. They gave away condoms. Uh, they gave away fi financial incentives to have less children. They reduced infant mortality due to infectious diseases. They cleaned up the water supply and they altered the desired number of children from eight to three. Um, in China, the population control is a political outcome. Uh, women must receive birth coupons prior to conception. Mass murders of uh, girl babies, abortions even at nine months gestation, uh, and women of reproductive age are examined and monitored. Okay, that is the PowerPoint that I've sped through in 44 minutes. Now I'm going to go because on your blackboard, oops, I thought I was at the right, okay, if you go to human population growth, here is the PowerPoint that we just watched. Here is an overpopulation worksheet that you're going to fill out for me and send back to me. If I open up this Excel file, you can see here are a series of countries, developed nations, US, United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, 
then areas southern Africa uh, that's not a country by the way South Africa is Namibia Botswana Zimbabwe Mozambique East Africa Kenya and Tanzania Equatorial Democratic Republic of the Congo Nigeria Ethiopia Madagascar and then any three countries that you're interested in I want you to report the population size percentage of people under 24 years old the median age the population growth rate population doubling time which you're going to have to figure out uh, and that's this Div 70 divided by this will give you this population doubling time. Infant mortality rate, life expectancy of birth, total fertility rate, contraceptive rate, gross uh, dimensional, the gross median income, female literacy rate, obesity rate. Um, and before you freak out, let me show you how easy it is to find all this. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Then I'm going to go to CIA.gov. CIA.gov. Yes, this is the real CIA. Uh, I don't think they're searching. And then you're going to look on there. You're going to search, or you can use my uh, link that was back on the PowerPoint. Go to the World Factbook. All right, go here. Okay, here are, please select a country to view. Let's look at South Africa since that's where we're going. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Here is the map of the country, introduction, geography. This is where you're going to find about 95% of that information. People in society. You're going to look at the overall population right now is 48 million. The age structure. So if I want to know the number of people under 24 years old, you just add these two together. Um, the median age. Population growth rate. It's actually declining. Why? HIV. Not because they want less births. 18.94 versus 17.49. The, the birth rate, the death rate is very high because of HIV. And people are migrating out, although they're beginning to migrate in. Uh, percent of the people that are in urban areas. Um, infant mortality rate. Life expectancy at birth is only 49.5 years. Um, HIV, 20% of the people in the country have um, HIV. All that information, you're done with South Africa. Please select a country to view. Uh, go to Botswana. Bada bing, bada boom, there it is. People in society, there's all the information that you need. So this is actually a, a pretty simple. I don't expect you to take more than 30 minutes to fill out this assignment, but get it back to me by July 7th as it outlined. So that is your uh, assignment on human overpopulation. Uh, I hope you got uh, something out of the PowerPoint. A lot of information there. Went through it fairly fast. Uh, if we were in class it probably would have taken me double that time given the number of questions I would have expected. But um, this gives you uh, an idea uh, of what to expect. and. Um, I look forward to getting your assignment back. Thank you.